in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago. <laughs> how long did you actually, now be honest here as well, how yeah. long did you think, okay, we'll give this a couple of years and sort of, you know? Well, like any band, I mean, you, you cross your fingers, you write some songs. First of all, you hope people are going to like what you do, but uh, in all honesty, I thought five years maybe, maybe you know, ten would be, wow, when we get our tenth anniversary, I thought, wow, we really, you know, Every much longer now, but but to have ten years under our belts, I thought that that was a good career. And how long is it now? It's thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> well, we started when I was ten. <laughs> thirty-five. Does anyone ever say when you're going to get a proper job? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did, Business. <same> difference, yeah. <laughs> No, no, well, that's what you say, proper job. The, the funny thing is, I've been, I've been very, very, very fortunate, and very, very lucky to, to have been made, made a living from doing what, what I love to do. As we all do, I mean, to be able to actually make money from enjoying yourself. It should, it's almost like it should be illegal sometimes. But very, very fortunate to be able to do that. You know, so. Yes, sir. Oh, here we go. Somebody over here got a question. Okay. Can you, can you hear it? Hang on. With all the bands doing the albums in their entirety, yeah. will we ever see Generation 13? That's a great question. Generation 13, for me, um, for those of you who don't know, it was a huge, huge project. Uh, just a little background on that on the record. Um, it was decided to do a uh, concept record when it was not, you know, people don't do concept records anymore. Uh, it was a huge undertaking. I remember being in the studio, we had a huge graph on the on the Richard Novall with all the, the song titles and then the, the instrumentation. And every time we get a guitar part done, we did very much like a jigsaw puzzle, whatever we wanted to work on that day. Let's work on the guitar on that song and work on the keys on that song and the vocal on that song. But we crossed it off as we were going. And Jim and I were sitting at the console one day and it was, just, it was one of those very laborious days and we went over and Right. Yeah, we've been working on this for a really long time. It doesn't look like we're getting anything done. I said, well, just hang on a second. And we've been doing it in pencil. So I picked up a, a, a Sharpie and walked over and went, okay. And I, and I realized we were like half, you know, halfway through, you know, two thirds of the way through. Um, I think Generation 13 should be presented um, properly uh, as like a stage presentation, not just stand up and play it. So I, I believe it could, could actually be. Uh, I think a musical or, or some kind of proper stage production, and we're still planning on doing that at some point. To answer your question, yeah? And the Broadway backers out there? <laughs> Can I just ask you, um, you were talking about um, some of the territories that you play in and were popular in. Just, was it just before Christmas you were in Europe? Yes. And yeah. you were playing, uh, I, don't, I think, you, did you play Switzerland? I'm sure you did. By Switzerland. Uh, we were in Switzerland. We were at the uh, in Pratland at the Z7. The L7. The L7. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice gig. Yeah, it's great. Very good. We love going there. And the funny thing was, five years prior to that was my last show, uh, the second last show before I took my little hiatus from the band. And the very next day we played Munich five years ago. We did exactly the same thing just now. We played Pratland and played the uh, played Munich, and we filmed the DVD of the Blu-ray uh, disc. We're just coming up very soon. So. Can I ask you what it was like coming back into the band after the break? I mean, you know, with, with the small children, it's not I want to spend time with my child, and well, that's what I know you want to get back to work. Yeah, yeah. After a while, yeah. It, after about two or three years, it was like I was starting. I was following the band when I wasn't in it, obviously. And I was doing it, 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 it more and more. I started thinking, yeah, I've got to get back out there, watching someone else do what I've been doing for thirty years. Um, I wasn't sure at first, in the first day of rehearsal I showed up thinking, well, there could be a lot of water under the bridge, there could be some resentment I don't know about. And we started rehearsing and got about halfway through the first song and, and it felt like I'd been gone for two weeks. So it was, it did feel strange watching somebody else. Oh yes, oh yeah. I, I, as a matter of fact, I went to see the very first show with uh, Rob Morati as the singer. And uh, I didn't tell anybody. I flew up from Los Angeles to Toronto, yeah. and I didn't tell anybody. I sat in the back of the room and watched them. They came, to, they, they wind him up, and he came on the stage and started singing, winding up, and I was going. 
It's a very, very surreal feeling. This has got to be, because on the one hand, you think you're probably singing it to yourself as well. But, I mean, I half of me just wanted to run and go, give me that, you know. <laughs> You're doing it wrong, you know. But uh, it, it was it was very strange. You know. What what are the the, the you, okay? You, we thought that we're gonna make a new album, and you will no doubt at some point take that out on the road. When you have done a new album, what generally are your expectations? I mean, the, the obvious spe expectation is that people are gonna like the album and buy it, which is not unreasonable. No, <laughs> but. How do you, I mean, how do you decide when you do an album, no matter how much you like it, you're going to do live, because no matter what, it's always a two-way street. You want people to like them, listen to new stuff, you want to promote it, but you've got to pay... It's a really delicate balance, yeah. yeah. It, depends on how, it depends on how soon you go out on the road with the record. But at the beginning, you don't play too much of it, uh, because they're not familiar enough of it. Um, as the tour progresses, we introduce maybe two, three more songs, uh, and then the next tour, obviously, we're playing more of that one, then a little bit of the next one. We, we, the funny thing about, about putting a set list together now is, is uh, when we started, we had one album, eight songs, and we had it for two hours, and it's like, what, what are we going to do for the rest of the time? And now it's completely reversed. It's like, what are we not going to play? I mean, invariably, someone would use the concert going, you didn't hear my favorite song. And then we've got this catalog that's this big now, we've got this much time to, to fit in. Well, you can end up by the very full day. You'd be on stage for five hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A house gig somewhere. So, so uh, time scale wise, that, this could tie in rather nicely with next year's Cruise to the Edge. If we were invited back. Well, you know, you, <laughs> I was going to say. So well, I, I must say, I must say, when we found out we were going to, to uh, be on this cruise, we were extremely excited, very much looking forward to playing, and, and we were so jazzed to play it. So hopefully, um, you know, we've made enough of a, a, an impression of you saying hello that uh, they'll have us back next year and that, you know, do a nice big show in the theater. Yeah, we hope Do so. what we yeah. do. You know. Okay, well, I've got a question over here. Mr. Sadler, first of all, I want to thank you for singing tonight. My pleasure. Uh, thank you. But um, I've always loved the song Humble Stance, and uh, I've always wondered where that song came from. I'm an entrepreneur, and I know weakness doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, Can you give me some lineage on that? And also, seeing you on stage with uh, Zebra and Randy over here, it's like a dream come true. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you want to know about Humble Stance and how it came about? Okay, Humble Stance was the, um, one of the very first songs that I actually demoed with Jim because I was I had gotten out of the music business for about a year, and Jim had joined a band in Toronto called Flood. And when that band broke up, he started writing some material. He called me one day, and I was actually doing a straight job. I had a three-piece suit. I was and selling uh, uh, graphic arts, and he said, can you come over one day, I wrote some songs, and I just want to, I don't know, like the sound of my own voice, blah, 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 so I went out with my wife, and we had dinner, and then afterwards, we went in the living room and brought us some cardboard boxes, and we're, those were the drums, and there were no, there were no uh, uh, polyphonic synthesizers at the time, so to create pad sounds, we were like recording them, sound on sound, you know, one note at a time, C, and then, then the, whatever notes you needed, and the chord back and forth. But that was one of the very first songs that we ever wrote together. That, How Long, and two others that did were the songs that I worked on that night. Went to work the next day, came home, looked in the mirror, thinking about what I'd done the night before, and I said, I didn't recognize the guy in the mirror, and I called Jim up and I said, that's it, let's go for it. So Humble Stance is one of the, uh, one of the ones that caught me. That's what happened to that song. And I wasn't supposed to play bass in that song. The only reason I played bass on stage is because one day the original management threatened to replace me because I was stuck behind the keyboards all the time. I said, we need a lead singer, we need someone out there, and I thought, oh, really? So I said, well, to solve that, I taught Jim my keyboard parts and I picked up the bass, so I'll, I'll play bass. Originally it was just to get me out front and, and, and to become an entertainer. And they unleashed the beast. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, we've had a couple more songs, presumably, worked on.